uh, if they use, the ha use these hashtags. But remember, what are you getting on side proposition is, is that women in terrible countries will then get beaten up for the end of time because they will not do anything for the issues that they are facing in their society. And we believe that this move, these movements don't apply only for white women in, uh, in privileged countries, which they do and it's good. We are actually helping these third, uh, third, third, world, uh, third, third world women uh, to not get beaten up for the end of time, but actually to make change in the entire world Why and raise awareness uh, in, uh, no thank you, to raise awareness in these countries where these problems uh, aren't even trivialized, they are not even discussed. Okay, and uh, then I, uh, I have already covered their third argument about um, a bad discourse and they, then they talk about this burden on the victims the, themselves that they will have to include themselves. If the victims don't want to include themselves, they don't, they don't have to. But what we're saying here is that we are giving the, uh, the victims uh, the platform to actually say something. If you're living in, as, in the example that you gave Pakistan, how can you express yourself in a society that oppresses you, in a society where you can be, get beaten up if you try to say something about yourself? We are giving them a platform where, where they can access the entire world. Okay. Okay, uh, yes, but before I want to your fifth, sixth argument, yes. Prove to us exactly how you are including people like sexist and misogynists within your world who already know about rape but just don't care enough. Uh, how we are including these misogynists that don't hear about rape? Okay, we are we are uh, including more people that can uh, have more impact on them. If this person hears this information about how they are a misogynistic pig from their wife, they probably won't believe them because they are misogynists. But if the entire world includes itself in this in this discussion, they can actually get some more information and more uh, impact. Okay, now on to the fifth argument, which talks about these temporary, uh, ch uh, temporary changes and so on. But we believe that with this, with these hashtag movements, we are getting tangible impact in the world because we are assessing more people and we create discourse that can go on and on. And if these uh, positive benefits are so temporary, then your harms are, are, are also temporary because these movements go, uh, go on away quickly. But what we believe is that they don't. We believe that uh, by assessing uh, the, mo the, mo uh, the biggest amount of uh, people in the world, we can make this work. Madam, you say that by your, our logic, women should never do anything. But isn't it true that women should not try to go against their husbands and get risk beating, uh, getting beaten up to death when there's no more tangible benefit to them? Prove to us that women in third world countries are somehow benefited by taking this risk off their lives. Yes, they are benefited because they can use the hashtag. They can put pressure on their government to change things for them. They can make uh, they can make legitimate changes in this in the real world uh, rather than get them getting beaten up every day for not doing like, uh, literally anything. Okay, now moving on to our third argument, which talks about this support uh, for the victims uh, that these that these hashtag movements are accessing. Okay, so what was going on uh, before these hashtag movements? Different people were going to different issues. For example, rape victims, uh, ALS, uh, ALS disease sufferers, and so on. And they were they weren't really getting uh, enough support. So how does this? How does our world really work? We never really talk about rape culture in the world. We just turn the other cheek around. Or for example, in Croatia, when you see somebody when you see when you see somebody with a disease, you just turn the other way and go to and go to pray for for that. It doesn't happen to you. So even if we're not actually uh, talking about these issues and we are not uh, actually getting legitimate enough support for these victims. What happens when these, um, when these movements um when these movements occur uh, occur on the internet, we get um, we get um, uh, awareness, and we also get the entire movement that support these people, that support them to uh, to speak out. We saw it from our second argument. We saw we, we have movement that support these people and say, "Speak out! We support you. We believe that you're going through real, real issues, and these people are getting real emotional uh, emotional support uh, from someone." We, if we take an example, for for, for example, from uh, for, uh, of a girl who is I don't know lives in some village and she was raped by her uncle. She can never, uh, she can never tell somebody about it. She's probably going to be blamed for the fact that she that she was raped. But what this little girl does is that she goes on Instagram, she goes on Twitter, and she sees famous actresses saying "me too" on social media, and she sees that this is a real issue. So I can talk about it. It's not my fault. I can, I have emotional so support from the entire entire international community, from the entire movement that exists only because of me and because of people who have the same issues as I do. And we can also see some practical support coming out of this, uh, out of these moments. For example, financial support for uh, for ALS disease sufferers. We believe that by opposing this motion, uh, by not regretting this, we can see that we have actually managed to get some emotional uh, emotional support for uh, victims uh, of these uh, hideous uh, things. And even if that's uh, that's one person, it's not uh, it's not for us. But we see that it has happened to millions and millions of people. Also, okay. So what have I proven to you in my speech? I have proven to you that all the benefits that side 
the side of proposition wants to achieve are achievable, achievable on the side of opposition because we because uh, we have gotten uh, we have gotten discourse, we have gotten more people informed, and we have achieved benefits for these victims. We believe that there um, that their arguments uh, haven't remained uh, remain stated because they haven't fulfilled their duty to define to us what they actually want, and even if they uh, even if they had, we have proven to you why our, uh, our arguments still remain stated. Thanks. And I call now the third speaker of the proposition. sit on Facebook and listen to you because there was the, those prayers made no difference. Those likes those players got made no difference. Those shares those players got made no difference. The heart reacts on Facebook made no difference to the people who were being bombed in Syria. The children through the 341 children who died in a school in Peshawar, ladies and gentlemen. Where is their justice? It cannot exist solely on Facebook, ladies and gentlemen. That is the crux of our case, and that is what we brought to you at Proposition, and that is something that opposition has failed to directly engage with in this debate today. That justice cannot exist on Facebook, ladies and gentlemen, and that hashtags make it seem like that there is an illusion of justice that exists, which means that now we don't have to pursue anything tangible. And we think that is absolutely criminal on side opposition. And they cannot win this debate if that's the model they're proposing. But the second idea over here, in response to our POI, second opposition has taken on the burden on their team to now somehow prove to us that hashtags have the capability of making significant enough change in the sense that they might even be able to influence governments, ladies and gentlemen. So please show to us the last time, in your own words, Congo 2017 or whatever managed to make a difference on any government on the planet, ladies and gentlemen. That is now your burden that you have taken on yourself. So good luck winning this debate. Moving on to the three issues within this debate. First, is it easier for victims or are you placing an unfair burden on them? Secondly, is there more awareness? And thirdly, even if there is more awareness, is that awareness contributing to any form of positive change, ladies and gentlemen? And we think that in each of these cases, these issues fall conclusively to side proposition. So let's move on to the first one about victims, right? And over here, we give you very clear-cut analysis about how you're trivializing the suffering of these victims. And this is where we talk to you about the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge, to which they had no response to the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge, ladies and gentlemen. So they haven't directly engaged with this part of our analysis. Sit down, you need to listen to this, right? But instead, what they said was, no, no, no. You are not trivializing the, the suffering of these people. And you know what? Even if you are, that's fine because at least people, more people know. But if more people know about an issue in light of it being trivialized, in light of it being made insignificant or made fun of, ladies and gentlemen, we think that is not doing justice to the victims, ladies and gentlemen, we think that is unfairly attacking these victims. Because if I have literally lost control of parts of my body, ladies and gentlemen, and then after that, gone through suffering for years, I've been unable to live a life, ladies and gentlemen, after that, I see a video on Facebook where there are four 14-year-olds <coughs> dancing around to the next Justin Bieber song and throwing buckets of ice on themselves oh, and cracking gosh. jokes. Is that me feel being feel being? Do I feel supported then? Is that the context of this debate? Because that's what realistically happens. It's not that you send out heartwarming messages, ladies and gentlemen. You literally throw ice on yourself. What is this ice and these songs and these jokes doing for these victims? They are simply attacking them and demeaning the struggle they've gone through. Yes, anyone? 
even if you believe that trivialization is collecting money for those people, sometimes trivialization is helping uh, uh, to see those people that illnesses are not something that they should uh, cry about and, and not something that they should uh, uh, lose hope and, and yes. Trivializing an issue tells you don't cry about the fact that you have cancer for the rest of your life and may die very, very soon and not get to live a life with your family. You shouldn't be sad about the fact that you are really sick and people are making fun of it all around the world. Yeah, good job. Right? Second part, second bit of analysis that we had for you over here. That you're burdening and excluding the victims that you're trying to help, ladies and gentlemen, through the hashtag. And where did we talk about this? In context of the Me Too campaign, for example, ladies and gentlemen, what happened? What happened was that women who still felt uncomfortable coming out online because guess what? Facebook is not the best social support platform there is because you don't have well, so thoughtful therapists sitting there. You have people People who have no filters, people with very, very different opinions, people who don't think your problems are legitimate sitting there, right? And over here they said, no, no, you have lots of emotional support. Really, is that why when women came out, you actually had misogynist men telling them to shut up or stay silent because their problems were nothing, like, because they were simply seeking attention, ladies and gentlemen. Is that emotional support? Well, the second idea we brought over here, that the vast majority of women, for example, in the third world, Gentlemen, where the true core of this issue lies and you really need support. Right over here, when you do this, you will get retaliated against, beaten up. Here she said, oh wait, no, but, but your uncle has raped you, so now you should put it on Instagram and everything will be fine. Will your uncle not see Instagram? Will he not now think that, oh, I might be exposed? Let me go silence her properly this time. That is what you're doing to victims, right? That's not making it fair or easier for them. We've taken this issue. Second idea, is there more awareness? We've already talked about this in terms of trivialization, but secondly, we told you that you missed the nuance of the issue itself. So for example, the Me Too campaign they love so much completely missed out on the fact that there is assault against men also, ladies and gentlemen. That is a huge part of this issue. But when men brought it up, it seemed like they were appropriating the female movement, right? And that's not fair. But even when you had certain arguments or tried to talk about nuances, the fact that Me Too said that no, you must speak up meant that women who go for, say, civil settlements in rape cases or harassment cases were now branded as not feminist and too stupid to realize their own issues and understand their own personal circumstances, ladies and gentlemen. That is not awareness over here, right? And that's something that they haven't talked about because the intention of a 15-year-old is not to change the world, is not to do better by someone. It's that, oh, how many likes will I get on this? Is can uh, How popular will this make me in my school amongst my friends? How many more friends will I make? How many more people will like me? That's not awareness, ladies and gentlemen. That's simply pettiness, which is what the hashtag culture is promoting. But even if we take them at their best and say, hey, there is awareness, does that bring change? And this is where the core idea about guilt that us were talked to at first and still is not refuted, ladies and gentlemen, came up. Where we talked to you about the fact that guilt is so necessary for positive change. And this is where first opposition and second opposition lost the debate. Because they said that, oh no, no, in that moment when you see a video of African people dying in uh, Nigeria, for example, you have guilt. Yes, you in that moment you have guilt. And then you share that video, write a hashtag, and that guilt is gone, ladies and gentlemen. That's the problem. And when the movement evaporates from on the net and from on the online space, then your guilt is never reminded. You are never reminded of that guilt. That is then gone completely and you don't have any catalyst to make any sort of change. The alternatives we gave to you are many. We talked about actual political dissent, go protest, talk, join support groups, fund support groups, fund organizations, volunteer at places. All of these are very tangible things you can do. You had discoursed long before hashtag culture arose. That's not the part in this debate. They have lost. Thanks a lot for your speech, and I call now the last speaker from the
Dear panel, the proposition team is the team that regrets the movement that really informed the people who didn't really care before that. This is the team that uh, 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 regrets that people donated money, that people shared their, uh, their, their beliefs and that shared uh, the, the suffering of those people. The, uh, the team uh, of proposition regrets that we broke taboos about rape, that we finally, for the first time, talked about rape, talked about Black Lives Matter, and talked about equality between people. This is what team proposition clearly regrets in this, in this debate. The team, uh, the, the, the team opposition regrets the fact that we donated money for some people and that we uh, bring the, uh, brought the closure for illness people, that, that we, uh, that, that, that we said, said to them that, that, that their illness is not that of a big problem, that they can do it, and that they can, can carry on with their lives, even if it's uh, 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 doing it with ice bucket challenge. And this is what, what really trivialization is helping us in this debate. When they lost this debate, from the very beginning, is they say, yeah, it's horrible, but they never say, what, so even if we assume their harms, no thank you, even if you assume their harms, we say that if it's the only way to reach some people, if it's the only way that people are going to donate money, if it's the only way that some people are going to think about it, we don't regret it. We don't regret the only way that we are going to achieve some people to think about it. We don't regret the only way that we are going to actually collect money for these people. And this is what the proposition clearly misunderstood, uh, 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 misinterpreted in this debate and never proved the actual mechani mechanism. Why are people going to uh, sit down and watch newspapers uh, and, and watch television, etc.? Because we live in the era where, where everyone has like, Instagram, where everyone has uh, Facebook, and this is the only way that we are going to reach the masses, and we are so proud to oppose. And yet, and then, no, thank you. It, it, uh, so, so, it, uh, so they have based the, their whole case on the Ice Bucket Challenge. In my speech, three three pleasures. I'm going to uh, I'm going to explain on the Ice Bucket Challenge how this is actually the uh, uh, the right movement, and you should actually oppose this motion. So three clashes, solving the problem, second uh, discourse, and, and thirdly, uh, uh, s s supporting those people. Yeah. So for the Ice Bucket Challenge, you see, if their uh, if their uh, uh, best uh, uh, example fails, I then prove to you how our strong case is still standing. So solving the problem, we believe that people for primarily don't solve the problem because they don't know about it. So in ASL Ice Bucket Challenge, no one ever knew what ASL was and, and how uh, how this was. Secondly, people don't really feel connected with those people and, and once they, you see that they are illness people and that they are ill people of same age, of same age uh, uh, and same uh, like race or same uh, uh, yeah, same age as you, well, for example teenagers suffering from ASL diseases, you are more likely to see that, uh, that you are going to solve the problem. This is what, what team opposition says, that you need to connect with those people, you are connected throughout images, you are connected throughout, uh, throughout videos, you are connected throughout, throughout those social media and this is the only way that you can reach masses and reach people to do the to, to, to donate money, and thirdly, we, we, we believe that the, that people in those situations feel feel privileged. That, that, that those people feel that uh, that they have something that do, other people don't have. For, for example, health, or for, for example, that they have not been raped. This is the way that, that we are going to say to people massively, massively that people are actually being raped, that, that people are living in terrible conditions for the dictators, and that they are being ill. This is the way that opposition really reaches the masses and really takes something to solve this problem. And even if not everyone is going to uh, is going to think yes, I need to solve the problem. We are at least doing something. We're at least saying to some people with what dictatorships uh, is like are like, what rape is like, and we are actually bringing so, some sort of change. And, and pro the pro pro proposition never actually explains the mechanism uh, 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 behind it. So by our side, you have everyone actually seeing it, and some people are uh, are going to act, act accordingly. Uh, and they say, yeah, uh, people need, uh, need to feel the guilt. Yeah, people feel the guilt because uh, because this is something that they uh, that they feel that they, they have not been through, and then they feel guilty for those people. But sometimes the only thing that you can do is show support to those people. Sometimes the only thing that, that you can do is donate money for those people, and you can do nothing about it. And this is not a clear team opposition. This is not a threat. Okay. Uh, 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 secondly, discourse. We're saying to you, and they're saying you're excluding some people. No, we're actually including people in this movement. We're making this movement available. No, for everyone. We're making this mo uh, movement global. We're making this movement uh, worldwide. Thus, meaning that everyone can do something about rape. That everyone can show support. That everyone can uh, hashtag me too. That everyone hashtag uh, Black Lives Matter. That everyone hashtag. Corey 2017. Thus meaning that, that, that people are actually more included and more able to talk about problems that they know about. That they have, uh, have been through uh, uh, pictures, no. Uh, that they have been through pictures
scientists, and they have actually uh, be, been capable of understanding and finally getting some information about it, and furthermore, uh, informing themselves uh, if they know uh, the core problem. We believe that, we, we believe that, 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 that once you don't believe or, or don't even know that, 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 that some problems are relevant, that, that, that you, you don't really know that some problems are happening, you don't really care for it, and you, you're never actually going to uh, be encouraged to, uh, to read articles. No, to read articles, to read something about it. Thus meaning that, that, that they're never actually making some sort of change, never actually encouraging people to ever feel uh, like, like they can do something, they exactly. never can actually make a discourse. And yes, we believe that no one ever heard of ALS before, and we have done donated money, we have made discourse about uh, about the deal people, and we have been close to them. This is my third, uh, this is my third uh, uh, clash. Okay, even no, even if you don't believe me that we are solving the problems, even if you don't believe that that, that, that we are creating discourse, what you have to believe me in this clash is that we are bringing closure, that, that, that we are bringing peace to those people, and we are bringing purpose and hope in their lives. Because we cannot neglect the fact that that uh, that raped people. Have once been raped, because uh, because we we cannot neglect the fact that ill people are ill. We say that they need to some sort of have hope. They need to some sort of live with that. And we are bringing this uh, this to them by only opposing this motion. They regret this, and I'm going to explain you how. Uh, we we believe showing the support from global community that you don't have unique problems. That there are millions of people suffering from the same illness. That there, that there are uh, uh, many people uh, also being raped. That, and the global community is is uh, is is, um, is actually uh, talking about your problem. Thus, meaning that those people can finally see that uh, that uh, that they need to have hope, that they need to continue with their lives without being depressed, without even killing themselves, because they believe that uh, that, that rape is something so terrible and so uh, unsolvable. We seem to you that me to have to me to make people feel secure in their skin, make people uh, uh, and victims of rape uh, actually feeling that they can do something. That they are the not uh, 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 the, the rape thing is not the reason to kill yourself. It's not the reason for you to stop living. And this is what, what we bring to them. We also bring to them the closure, the, uh, 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 the feel of community, and the feel uh, that, that, that we bring all the oppressed people together. They're saying to you, you're excluding uh, sexists. You're excluding uh, people, uh, for example, rapists, etc. We say yes, but we then, uh, but but you, we unite people that are oppressed. You unite all of these people that are. Uh, that, that are feeling insecure. We are uniting all these people that wanted to kill themselves because of the sexes, that wanted to kill themselves because of those races that, that they abuse them and kill them in everyday lives. This is what the opposition, opposition does not stand for. We do not forget this motion. I beg you to oppose. Uh, thanks a lot for your speech, and I call now the reply speaker for the opposition. trivializing things too much so many times in this debate, so let me trivialize something for the portal of one last time in this debate. I think that there are three core steps to making a change in this world. First of all, you need to know something about the problem. You need to recognize the problem and you know have some information about what the problem is, what it's like, how, how much does this happen, where does it happen, why does it happen, etc. Then, second of all, you need to actually care about what you read about and you know, have some feelings of, oh, well, this might be not right, this might be not just, this is something that should be changed because I just feel in my gut that this is something that isn't right. And third of all, then, when you decide that you know something about it and that you care about it enough to change it, then you act. Now, on side proposition, they accuse us that, we don't, that people won't care, that people won't act, but how can they accuse us of that, when on their side, not even this first step, the people who know about it exists. So let's let's talk about three types of people, okay? Because I really like number three. So first of all, we have people who just you know don't care, and th those people who don't care about girls being raped, those people that don't care that black lives don't uh, aren't equal to white lives, th those people that don't care about the ALS people being really really disabled and sick. Those people won't care on either of our sides because those people just are like that. And they don't care about other people. And they just aren't the type of people that want to help other people. You know, let's be realistic, those people exist. Exist. So and then 
We have people who do care. We have people that already are activists. They, 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 we have people that are, already are engaging to make some change in our society. We have people that have devoted their lives or parts of their lives to helping other people. And, you know, to helping the kids with cancer, kids with ALS, uh, girls that were raped who really do all these tangible things that a side position is telling you through this whole debate. These people who already are donating money and, you know, have puppy shelters or whatever else and, uh, you know, volunteer in women's shelters. And those people will care on their side and on our side just as much because someone can just stop caring because they see this overly trivialized ice bucket challenge. Okay, so now that we all agree that people who don't care and people who do care, care on both sides, Let's talk about the third type of people, the people who don't know they care yet. Because without, without actually having the information that a problem exists, without actually knowing there is such a problem as, you know, like 10 actresses getting raped by a director, people having diseases such as ALS that before used to be just three random letters, now it's something that you know something about, you know people are suffering, you have the idea what it is and how hard it is because you inform yourself. Why? Because yes, you see your idiot friends pouring ice on their heads. But you wonder, wait, why are they pouring ice on their heads? And then you click on the hashtag ice bucket challenge where you see that this is for people that are seriously ill, that this is for people who have problems. And this is where you start to inform yourself. This is where this ALS isn't just three random letters to you anymore, if you do care. And if you don't care, you wouldn't care on either side of the house. And this is why we, as a side opposition, get people to care. This is why we, as a side opposition, get people to be informed. And yes, it is on social media. It is on the same medium where you, you know, post your selfies and, you know, ask your friends to go out with you on Saturday night. But exactly this is the point. Because everyone is here. Because this is the place that we know people are going to be on. This is the place we know people are going to spend a lot of time on. This is the place where things get shared and clicked and liked and hearted for millions and millions of times. And this is what side opposition says it's harmful because you know the victims are going to feel like you know they're probably not sure guys. But let's face it, neither they nor we know how victims feel. But we are the ones that are making the change society, we are the ones that are the Thanks a lot for your speech and I call now the prop uh, proposition reply to speaker concluded there. Give them hope. Tell them it will get better one day and then see that hope being snatched away from them the next time they're abused but you can't do anything about it is what team opposition wants you to do. Because we as a side proposition reject giving false hope to women who are trapped in a cycle of marital abuse. We feel like you shouldn't give them this false hope and we don't get what this false hope will do for them. And you need to understand something. In, uh, in third opposition and op reply, they completely reinvented their case and brought up this new material of how you're going to prevent suicide of rape victims and how that's such a huge problem. We feel like that was never once brought within their case before and really can't be credited much within this debate. But we'll still, as a generous proposition, refute that. Because we feel like it's not really about that. Why? Because when you yourself are pressurized into the Me Too hashtag, it's not about suicide, you're not your biggest threat. It's other people who might hurt you. We feel like they're the ones you need to care about. And in the op reply, they conceded. They will never ever change the mindsets of anyone within their world. So we feel like awareness is a means to an end and not an end itself. It's supposed to be used to bring some kind of change, right? We feel like it's not something independent of that. So if we've proven to you that awareness does not bring change within this world, we feel like we do in this debate, right? And we've proven that on multiple levels. We told you that for example, and here's where they don't refute our best case even once. What was our best case? It was about hashtags like all lives matter, which make minorities feel worse, but empower white supremacists and unite them.